Hello, thank you for that. Uh, welcome. Good morning. It's Newsday from the BBC World Service. Good to have you with us. And Kemi Fedjika and Paul Hawkins with you. President Xi Jinping has been telling a Congress of the Communist Party of China how well they've performed over the last five years. So more on that in just a moment. Also, Kurdish fighters say Raqqa, the uh, de facto capital of the so-called Islamic State, has fallen. Uh, we'll hear from a reporter in the city. We'd just like to say hello to our listeners in Kenya. If you're listening on Pamoja FM or Star FM or K. UFM in Nairobi. Mm. Uh, remember, good morning. Good morning. Today is a big day for you uh, here on the World Service. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us, send us a text message on plus four four seven seven eight six twenty fifty eighty five. I'll repeat that number. It's plus four four seven seven eight six twenty fifty eighty five. And so uh, let's go on to the story which we've been talking about. Um, so this morning, or the, the, this morning, our main story here on the uh, on Newsday is. Uh, about concerns surrounding Kenya's presidential election rerun. They're supposed to be taking place next week. The opposition NASA coalition's candidate, Raila Odinga, will not be taking part because they say that their concerns have not been addressed and that the elections won't be credible. Well, somebody who's supposed to be there is Dr. Rosalind Akombe. She was a senior member of Kenya's Electoral Commission, the body expected to clean up its act after the Supreme Court nullified the first election. Now, we say was because uh, Dr. Akombe has left Kenya, and I asked her where she is now. I'm back in New York, in the United States. And where should you be? I am actually supposed to be in Dubai, working with the commission on finalizing the preparations for the ballot papers for the election that will be held on the 26th of October. So why are you in New York and not in Dubai? You know, I've been agonizing for months now about my role at the commission and uh, my effectiveness at the commission and my safety, actually, and security. And I reached a decision after visiting four counties across the country and seeing my staff. I realized that we are in a difficult situation as a country, preparing for an election in which you have one candidate that has withdrawn, in which you have the commission not meeting all its obligations and yet not coming out very strongly to say that these are the challenges we are facing in terms of technology. We've been having a situation in the commission whereby every decision is on the basis of a vote. And so it was becoming increasingly difficult, really, to be able to stand up and say, I am doing this because I believe in it. It was more of, I'm doing this because we have a collective responsibility and I have to defend those positions even when I didn't believe in them. So why don't you stay in Kenya and fight out your position? Why have you gone to the United States? It is not possible, as the commission is constituted right now, to make any changes internally because you have to have enough votes. The second aspect of it is a safety and security issue. I mean, you have seen, you are aware that uh, nine days before the last election, our manager in charge of uh, ICT communication, Chris Musando, was brutally murdered. That has never been resolved. Well, your brother recently had to leave the country, is that correct? Yes, my brother had to flee the country because he was getting a lot of threats. I was getting threats, and those those threats extended to him. What where sort of people threats? Were using, people were using words of calling him on WhatsApp and sending him messages and telling him, tell your sister to stop asking too many questions, tell your sister to relax about, you know, senior staff being sent home, or you would be msandled. Go. Did you feel there were any threats to your life? Absolutely. I mean, I, I have never felt uh, the kind of fear that I felt in my own country. I have traveled around the world. I have lived in various countries. So if you get such messages and you've seen your own staff get that and, and be murdered, you will really be suicidal to think that nothing would happen to you. Where were these threats coming from? The governing Jubilee Coalition or from NASA? I always see the possibilities of threats coming from anybody because sometimes... It's opportunistic. You mentioned that the changes that the opposition were asking for, they haven't been implemented at the Electoral Commission. Can you just expand on that a little bit more for us? My sense really is that there was a period of time in which we could be able to make meaningful concessions that would have allowed NASA and Jubilee to play on an, a level playing ground in this election. But that time has lapsed. Um, Rosalind, that time is over. Rosalind, I'll ask you two pointed questions. Mm -hmm. Is Chairman Chebukati, an able leader of the commission. Chairman Chebukati is a very well-meaning person. He has the temperament to be able to be a leader, but he's a leader who is under siege in the commission. But is he able? Well-meaning, yes, but is he able? 
I mean, really, I think for me, it is about the support piece that he just doesn't have within the commission. That is not really an endorsement. <laughs> well, if he was much more firmer, I think probably we could have gone much far. But, uh, you know, he's, you know, there are aspects of, of his character that are helpful in a situation like we have now. But uh, there are times you just need firmness to be able to move on. Will Kenya and the commission be ready to conduct credible elections on the 26th of October? You know, I was going to say that if it is to conduct an election, yes, the commission can hold an election. Would it be a credible election? Absolutely not. There is a very high likelihood that the mistakes that some of the presiding officers made during the last election will be repeated. If you are dealing with an election in which at least half of the country is not going to be participating in. Could you consider that, that the environment for having credible election exists? It does not. Has the NASA coalition, the opposition of Mr. Raila Odinga, has that party been putting some of your staff under pressure in some areas in the country? Yeah, absolutely, and it's, and it's unacceptable to have uh, any of our staff across the country being attacked by, by NASA supporters. That is absolutely unacceptable. But, you, but it's also but the you do, constant... But you, you do realise that by giving this interview, you, you will give them credence to, to, um, when they say that the election process will not be fair. You do realise that they will use this interview to justify scrapping the election or at least getting rid of the chairman of the Electoral Commission. You see, my personality requires that I speak the truth. But there are also aspects that I cannot live with. I cannot live with an election that is never going to be a credible election. So if it's misunderstood by Jubilee to be me trying to delegitimize the process, that is the truth. We have to get to a point whereby we are able to speak the truth, whether that truth hurts Jubilee or whether that truth hurts NASA. But it is the truth. Do you envisage yourself going back to Kenya in the foreseeable future? Uh, no. So you are in exile, in effect? <laughs> I mean, I don't see myself being able to... I, I don't feel safe enough to be able to go back home. I haven't been feeling safe being there. And, uh, and I, I don't feel safe. That's very back sad. Home. No, it is, it is sad. I mean, it is, it is, it is sad, but um, this is not what I ever thought it was going to end up being as a job. So just to clarify, Dr. Rosalind Akombe, who is a commissioner at the Independent uh, Electoral and Boundaries Commission in Kenya, supposed to be conducting next week's election, she has fled the country because of fears for her safety and because she didn't feel that she would be able to carry out a credible election next week. Yeah. Um, your reaction to that interview, please, especially if you're listening in Kenya, although you don't have to be, uh, you're, the number plus four four seventy seven eighty six twenty fifty eighty five. 44 um, She conceded that uh, the opposition, which says that the reforms haven't been made at the Electoral Commission, she says that the Electoral Commission hasn't made those reforms. Where does the country go from here? What should happen with the rerun of the election due on October the 26th? Uh, the number plus four four seventy seven eighty six twenty fifty eighty five.